To perform this part of the deep insight analysis, this verification and this code profiling to get that real deep insight into how my application is behaving, what I have right here in front of us is the Ozone J-Link Debugger version 2.5, which is a standalone graphical debugger. The cool thing about this is that it can load any debug output from any tool chain or IDE. And what it is gonna allow us to do is look at instruction tracing, look at code profiling, and it really allow us to verify that our application is performing the way that we expect it to. So one of the things that you would do with this is I would create a whole bunch of test cases, run my code, run the test cases, and then I could see whether I actually hit every single line of code in my test cases. So I'll be able to find out, did I actually test function startup to its complete 100%. If not, it means that there could potentially be a bug hiding in my code that I wasn't even aware of. Now, in order to get real deep insights like this and get real-time streaming so I can see how the code is behaving, the real recommended way to do this is to use a JTrace. And the JTrace has an ETM on board, a bunch of channels to be able to stream, stream data over to the Ozone tool in real time so I can see what's actually happening. Now, JTrace up on the, the Sager website has a tutorial associated with it to get this up and running very easily. So what I'm gonna do is open that tutorial and you can see here I have two different choices. The JTrace comes with a little reference board that allows you to really quickly test out the JTrace capabilities and go through an example and see the code profiling and how it all works. Since I have an Empower board and that's the other option, that's the, one, that's the file I'm gonna load into the IDE. And you can see here when I do this, it looks like just about any other debugger that maybe you've used in the past. But the cool thing about this is that this one is separate from the compiler. So I'm just, I'm not allowing myself to compile the code. I'm just wanting to perform verification and get some new insights into my application. So you can see here, I have some uh, source code here. I have an instruction trace window up in the upper left. It says no target currently connected. When I loaded the debug file, it performed an analysis here. And look, you can see here, I have different symbol names, different functions. I can see where they're located in the memory, their size, how many instructions are associated with them, and even the source module from which they come. And then of course, I'm gonna have this little code profile window, which I haven't started running my actual application yet. So there's no information or data. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is actually run this. You can see, I just loaded this application onto the development board. It has already executed till main, which means it's gone through and already executed some instructions. And you can see the, over here in the instruction trace, these are all the instructions have been executed so far. So I can come up here and scroll up and see the different areas of memory that have been already ran. Now, a lot of these instructions are gonna be, of course, in assembly, and they may not have a, since it is startup code, it may not have real C code associated with it. But what I can do to actually take a look at that is since I'm at the start of main, one of the things I can do is perform a step over and I can see here, I just stepped in the main. So we can see here the C code, main entry. Here's the instructions that were executed. I can go and do this again. Here's the next set. We actually set count equal to zero. So you can see here count equals zero. And these were the instructions that were executed in the CPU. So if for some reason I wanted to, I could actually go back and verify every single instruction that was executed by my code or if I wanted to verify perhaps that the compiler was behaving the way I expected it to, I could do a real low level dive and see what's actually happening in the CPU. Now, of course I could step again here and you can see here that I have uh, executed a couple, a couple lines of code. I can actually right click here and say execute counters. And you can see here, it'll actually tell me how many times a particular line of code has been executed. So that's actually a really cool thing. So I can see here that count equals zero was executed once, BSP init was executed once, BSP set LED, this hasn't been executed yet. It's got a zero right next to it. So if I go through and I step over this line of code, it suddenly changes to a one. And while we get into these while loops, you can see here if I ju just jump through lines of code here, you can see that I get a change there of how many times the code was actually executed. Now if I go through and I actually run this code and just let the application run, you can see here, I'm getting real time trace data coming out of my CPU from my application, showing me how many times these different functions have been executed. So you can see here that test function to count this decrement has already almost been executed 20, 20 million times. It just passed that. We're approaching 25 million now. And this is all happening in real time. And the cool thing about this is I can come over to my code profiling window and you can see here the different functions that are in my application and I can see the source coverage and the instruction coverage. Now, 
for every single line of C code that's generated, it doesn't mean that it's only going to generate a single instruction associated with it. There could be more instructions. So we get this deep insight here of source coverage versus instruction coverage of the application. And we're seeing here our run count, a fetch count, and even the load of the CPU. So we can see here that, hey, you know what? Test function two is actually using up most of the CPU load. 99.93% of, of all the instructions being generated or the CPU load here is right there in that function. And if I wanted to, I could even sort these here. So you can see here, I can go through and verify, ah, my BSP init function was covered 100% in my test cases. So this is where you know, verification of our application is very important. If I wanna make sure that I have hit every single line of code in my application, there used to be no way to do that. You just had to guess and kind of hope, cross your fingers that I actually covered all the lines of code and that there isn't a bug hiding in my code somewhere. Using this tool, using JTrace and, and Ozone here, I can literally run my code, run my test cases and determine, uh-oh, where, where's the holes in my test cases? I should have maybe covered BSP set LED 100%, not 75%. So this is where this tool could be extraordinarily useful for verifying our applications and just getting an insight into what's actually executing. Maybe I wasn't expecting test function two to be executing millions or billions of times compared to some of these other functions. I would never know that if I couldn't see this data and actually then go back and analyze it, which is another thing that I like about this. I can actually come and pause. And if I just click in here on any of these grids, I can export all this information uh, as either a report or a CSV file, and I can go back and then analyze it further to understand exactly how my application is behaving and maybe where I need to make changes or make updates to my test cases so that I can get 100% coverage. So I hope, as you can imagine, this could be extraordinarily useful, especially if we're trying to develop secure or very robust applications.